So let's get started. Um, I have a PowerPoint, so I'm going to try to share my screen. And um, this workshop is going to be a mixture. Oops. So let's make it larger. I don't want to use the um, presentation view because I have to I have to read stuff while I'm going through this and I didn't make copies of it. So can everybody see the PowerPoint? Yes. Thumbs up. Yay. So this uh, workshop is entitled African Head Wraps from Simple to Complex. And we're going to start with going. Um, here's an, an overview of what we're going to cover. Um, we're going to look at a little bit about the history of African wraps, the uses, the, just some different names, some African names for head wraps because they're different. Uh, and then we'll look at some different fabrics, options. I'm going to demonstrate some different wraps. And I, I've uh, taped a mirror to my computer so I can see what I'm doing. And, uh, and then I'm hoping that you will try some wraps yourself. Uh, with fabrics or scarves, whatever you have, material that you may have at home, and that uh, we can see ourselves at the end of this workshop all with a different simple or complex head wrap. And then wow. at the end, we'll have a QA and a in case you have any questions, although I'm not opposed to answering questions as we go along. And Andrea is going to be monitoring the chat in case there are questions. Uh, I'm, I'm not a very formal uh, meeting person, Eileen can tell you, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm go, you know, let's be real and authentic. So if, if you have questions, I'm not opposed to stopping in the middle and answering questions. So at the end of this workshop, I thought I would come up with at least three objectives for you to accomplish at the end of this workshop. First one, is I want you to be able to identify at least one purpose or utility for an African head wrap. And we're gonna cover several, several. The second objective is I would like you at the end of this workshop to be able to identify at least one African name for a head wrap. And then thirdly, I would like you to be able to leave this workshop being able to tie an African head wrap simple or complex. It's up to you. So those are three objectives. Now, are these, uh, uh, do you think, everybody, do you think that these are doable, achievable? Yes. Yay. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's get started. Um, so I'm going to start with head wraps among women on the African continent. And I have to say that there's so many different types of uh, tribal cultures on the African continent. There are over 3000 different African tribes. Wow. Um, so there is no one right way to do an African head wrap. I have to say that right off, okay? Um, these are some of the reasons or the purposes that African women wrap their heads. As we all know, in Africa, it's very hot. The weather's uh, the temperatures are soaring. So one of the purposes of the African wrap was to protect the scalp from the hot sun. Mm -hmm. And that also resulted in uh, keeping uh, women a lot cooler. Um, one uh, friend of mine, uh, who's in the medical field said, I had to mention that Africans were very advanced in so many different ways that we don't often recognize right now, but they knew that uh, by tying the head, uh, protecting the food was important. So this was done also to protect food from germs as well. Um, depending on the type of fabric that's worn, um, the the head wrap could be a symbol of a social status. And as we go over the different types of fabrics, you'll see some fabrics are quite uh, uh, expensive to make. Uh, so sometimes it could be seen as a social status. In some tribes, 
It's a symbol of your marital status. There are certain women who wore certain uh, wraps if they were married, certain wraps uh, or head wraps if they were single. Uh, sometimes in some tribes, it talked about your the, the family lineage that you're from. And then uh, uh, for Muslim women, a lot of head wraps are wrapped to exhibit modesty, you know, to cover the head. Um, that's why we see in the hijab, uh, it was done to uh, exhibit the, the modesty and the focus on that person's um, spiritual focus. So here's a couple of, of pictures of different women from Africa. Of course, you see on the far left, this is a modern day. Uh, uh, I think this was taken at a wedding or a party of some sort. You see a car in the background, so you know that's a modern day. But you see the African uh, culture represented in the jewelry, the dress, and then the head wrap. And it's just a simple head wrap with a big bow on the top. Mm -hmm. This is modern. And then you see in the center, um, this is kind of just tied around the head pack. And this is probably pinned in the back and then let fall down, which you might see in a nun, right? Yeah. Here you see a, a, a woman working in the fields and she's got a, a, a festive head wrap with, with wrapped. It looks like it might even be two different types of fabric and then some tassels on it. Here you see just a simple head wrap and it's hanging down in the back uh, on this young girl. And uh, some people say, well, maybe it was done to, to help because a lot of African women carry baskets, big baskets on their head and maybe the head wrap helped protect. Uh, I, I haven't seen any proof of that because um, a lot of women who carry big heavy uh, uh, containers of water or grain or, or whatever on their heads, they use a wrap. Let's see if I can, they use a wrap uh, of fabric that's twisted around and then they put that on the heads and then the bundle on top. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not the head wrap itself that would give much protection from the weight. Uh, but I have seen women create a, a, a circle of fabric that they put on their heads and then put the basket or the bundle on top of that circle. And then you see this young woman uh, who um, actually hers matches the outfit. Um, so, you know, this is probably uh, something a little bit more modern and this is just tied to the side. I love this look. Uh, those of y'all that have seen me, I have mine, I like, having something on the side. I call it uh, tufts and puffs. You know, I like to have tufts and puffs on my wrap. So I love this. And then in the center, you see different kinds of head wraps from this very simple band to a little bit more um, extensive look. And notice in this picture, I want you to notice these don't always match. That's one of the things I loved about Africa, the women would wear head wraps, did not have to match anything, okay? They were just rocking the colors and it didn't have to match. Um, some of them, you'll see some matching here with the red. Here you'll see some matching here, but here these are not matching, right? Not necessarily matching at all. This is matching a little bit, but it wasn't about matching. It was about just being you and being colorful. And I, I love the mixture. I'm gonna stop real quickly and see if there are any questions yet. I have a question. Yes. Sorry, there. Oh, I'm trying to undo my, oh, there we go. Okay, so um, this is Ruth. I just wanted to ask, um, on the center picture there, are they celebrating like a wedding or something? Because she's in white. And I was wondering also if on the top of her wrap, the white wrap, is that like a jewel or? That's something? a good question, Ruth. And I don't know the answer to either one of those. My guess is, yes, this is more than likely a wedding. And 
it's not uncommon to put jewels on. You'll see the band. This is the band is is a design in the fabric, but this right here may be a jewel of some sort. It's not uncommon oh, I um, to see jewels, feathers. Um, I've seen some wraps where uh, they augment the wrap with shoes. Like uh, there's sandals that are made very elaborately with different colors. I've seen sandals wrapped up in the head wrap. It's, it's as uh, extensive uh, as you want to get, but those are great questions. But yeah, it's not uncommon to see that. Okay, let's go to some different names for head wraps. Um, well, the first one is just a head wrap. You can always say head wrap. I, I don't like when people come up to me and say, I like your hat. Um, it, it, it's like, it's like, cause a hat is a certain thing, right? So when I hear that, I, it, it just makes me feel a, a certain kind of way. You know, it's like, I said, and I usually say, thank you very much. It's called the gele. Uh, that's the term I use mostly from Nigeria because, um, I have a friend from Nigeria who showed me how to rap and she called it a gay lay. And so I call it a gay lay and it sounds gay, you know, and fun. So I prefer that term gay lay. Uh, it's also called Duku in Ghana and Mal Mal Malawi. Duku in Zimbabwe and Zambia. Tukwi in Botswana. Hijab, of course, in the Muslim tradition. And Tignon uh, in Louisiana, I found out that there were um, uh, Afro-Creole women, and this is a picture of someone from Louisiana who um, would wear head wraps and they would put actually jewels and beads and necklaces in the head wraps, a very elaborate uh, wraps. Um, there were actually laws made, and we'll cover that in a little bit, uh, where uh, it was against the law not for, for African women not to wear to wrap their heads, right? So what they did, the Tignon laws uh, in Louisiana, so what the Afro-Creoles did was they would dress their head wraps up. So they would uh, have these very elaborate head wraps with jewels and feathers and stuff like that because they said, well, if I got to wear it, I might as well show myself to be the queen that I am. So these are some of the names. So you might wanna jot down the name that you prefer to use, or um, this is one of the, um, one of the objectives. And let's go to the next screen. So coming to America, so and the other thing I wanted to say about enslavement, and I say this in every workshop I do on African history, uh, a lot of times people will refer to African people as slaves. And I've heard people say, well, when the slaves were brought over from Africa, slaves were not brought from Africa. People were brought from Africa. People yeah. were transported and enslaved. They were not slaves, they were people. Okay, so it's important to um, emphasize the fact that these were women, these were African people who were stolen and put into a condition of enslavement. They weren't slaves, they were in, enslaved. So each of you can help educate other people when they say, well, the slaves, well, I, I, even if it takes uh, an extra three or four words, I will say the Africans who were enslaved because it points out that they were, uh, violence and wrongdoing were perpetrated against them. It wasn't a condition of who they were. It was something that was done to them. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. All right. So you'll see some of the, the purposes or uses of the head wraps doing enslavement, some of the same things, protection from the sun and keeping cool, protection from head lice um, and, and other things. Like if you're picking cotton all day, uh, 
you got to protect your head from all the cotton that's flying around because, you know, African hair is, is like super soft and super curly. So it attracts stuff. Can you imagine what your head would look like if you didn't have it covered at the end of picking cotton from be before the sun was up to after the sun was down? Your head would be full of cotton, right? So tying the head protected the head also from uh, uh, cotton, uh, germs, dirt, uh, lice, um, and all of that. So it was very uh, useful for African women. And even those who worked in the house, the big house, who were not uh, in the fields, uh, used it to protect uh, food from germs. And then it got to the point because it was commonplace that of course, you know, to uh, subjugate a people, you have to make them feel bad about themselves, right? So part of the laws uh, that were done throughout the United States, it wasn't just in Louisiana, they mandated African women that they had to wear scarves on their head if they appeared in public, their head has to be, had to be covered. And uh, even after emancipation, these laws were still on the books. So um, here are some pictures of African women. You can see here, uh, they all have their heads covered. This is Sojourner Truth. We all know about Sojourner Truth, I think, with the cloth on her head. And then some other African women here. Here, here this woman who's taken with, the picture is taken with someone, uh, a, a young child who she was probably responsible for. You can see uh, her wrap is a little bit fancier. She got some tufts and puffs, which I like. But most of them, because cotton was the cheapest cloth, you'll see most of these are just pure white, plain cotton head wraps, right? All right. So post-slavery, post um, like what most African Americans do, they, we take something that uh, has been mandated and we make it our own, we make it beautiful. So here are some pictures of folks that you might recognize. In the left here, you see Nina Simone uh, and she's wearing an African head wrap. It's a symbol of defiance. It's a symbol of uh, African cultural pride. Uh, it's also a fashion statement. Here you see um, Alicia Keys, and she regularly wears head wraps and um, also forgoes for makeup, right? She, she, I think got kind of famous because she said uh, she got to a point where I'm not wearing makeup, right? So she's, she's wearing this um, head tie at the top. And then here you see Lauren Hill. She just has it tied back, it's simple, very simple. And then Lupita, this, I would say this is a quite elaborate and complex head wrap. I I've been looking at it to try to figure out how I would do it and I don't, I'm not quite sure. I would have to work at it a little bit. And it may be that it was made for her and then put on instead of wrapped. That's a possibility because she, she, you know, she's got it like that. She got people that can do stuff like that for her. Also, uh, one of the purposes to protect the hair at night. Almost every African-American woman I know ties their head up at night. I do. Um, it helps protect the hair from breakage and um, also protects your linens from excess hair oils. And um, it's just, a, it's, 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 it's commonly done among African-American women. Of course, it's not as elaborate. The head wrap at night, it's just a do rag, you know, it's just covering something to cover up. But in the daytime, it's the uh, more elaborate wraps. And here's some other pictures of African American women post enslavement. So you see um, this wrap right here probably is using three different fabrics. 
I thought that was really cute. This one is very simple wrap, just wrapped around, right? And tucked under. Uh, this is a head wrap uh, in the front, a front knot head wrap. This is more of a top knot head wrap, more elaborate. Here's a hijab. And then these two are, are a little bit more complex. This, you require a lot more fabric to do these wraps. But you can see it's not uh, perfect. It's like one of the things I like, and if you look closely at African fabric, you'll see it's not uh, all perfect. And uh, when I was in Africa, one of the um, Africans there, in Ghanaians, told me that um, sometimes when they're actually making the designs, it's, it's purposely done to be asymmetrical. So it, there's something a little off about it because in life, everything's not as straight as sugar cane. Every, you know, there's a little bit of asymmetry to life. And it reminds them that, you know, you have to be a little flexible. You have to be a little asymmetrical with, with living. So uh, in how this sister has wrapped her hair, you can see she got things hanging, on, hanging down and stuff. It's just like, it's a more fun way to do it. It doesn't have to be exact. The same with this one, you see it's tied and then just wrapped down. Uh, it's okay. There's no one way to wrap a head wrap. You have fun with it. If you wanna have something sticking out, you can have it sticking out. It's all right to do that. And here's some others. Now I'm not covering some head wraps. I'm not covering uh, headdresses for men. Here you see uh, this gentleman has on a, a hat. These are actually men here in Africa. It's a tribe in Niger uh, during a courtship dance. So they will dress themselves up and have a dance comp competition to attract women. Uh, and so, and they'll put makeup on and, and just make themselves attractive. They have feathers. These are, these are men here. Uh, here's a woman uh, that has a very elaborate headdress. So it's not just a wrap. She's got other things that are sticking in this. And it might be, uh, it might be like the sandal one. Here, uh, the San people in Botswana, they just have the little um, a band around their heads. And if anyone has ever seen the movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy, if anybody saw, has anybody seen that movie? Raise your hand if you've seen it. Nobody saw that movie. Oh, Eva, you saw it. Yay. I think I saw it several years ago. But yeah, it's, it's back from the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while, but I think I did, I, I watched it. Yeah, it is so funny. It talks about culture in a way that you don't often see it done. So if you can get a copy of it and watch it, it's hilarious. It's, it's a comedy, but I learned a lot. And it features the San people and uh, what, they, what happens with them when they find a Coca-Cola bottle. And it's just hilarious. Uh, here you have the end of belly women from South Africa. These are the women that they make the beautiful, colorful houses. They paint their houses all different colors like these colors. So you see more, it's, some of these are almost, you could call them more hats. This one is certainly a very elaborate design uh, that's rolled and then tied on. Um, a lot of African women wear, um, uh, crowns that are made out of fabric and they're most of them are pre-made where you could just set them on your head and we won't be really covering that today we're just doing wraps but there are many different kinds of head wraps and then the fabric that's used um, most African head wraps that I like are made with African print on cotton so uh, here are some pictures of different kinds of African prints. There's tie dye, there's batik, there's cotton brocade, where there's, uh, you, you'll see on the fabric, it's almost like a raised design where you could actually, if you rub it, you could uh, feel the raised design. 
uh, a dairy, which is indigo tie dye using a resistant technique, Ankara, which is polyester and cotton, a shoke. A shoke is one of the most expensive. Uh, and this is a shoke. I brought this to do it, my a complex African wrap. But a shoke used to be made from cotton and silk, two different kinds of silk. Now, usually it's made from cotton and polyester and um, uh, metallic fibers, but uh, it's quite, um, uh, someone gifted me with this, this uh, outfit. I have the whole outfit and it's, I once wore it to um, a ceremony uh, that an African gentleman was having up in Orange County. He was being inducted as a to a very important position in, in a tribe in Africa. And so I went and I wore my Ashoke outfit with the head wrap and the, and the scar, uh, uh, um, skirt, blouse, and then a shawl. And all of these women who are mostly African women from the continent, they had on all these fabulous, um, modern outfits made out of traditional African fabric. And I was just so overwhelmed and I felt like I was old. And I said something, I said, oh, I'm just so sorry that I didn't have something more appropriate to wear. And this woman looked at me, she said, you're wearing a shoke. She said, you will always be in style because you're carrying the ancestors with you. And so I felt a lot better than I could wear something, even though it's not uh, contemporary, but it's so traditional that it will always be accepted. So this is a shoke, it's very expensive. And the person who gave me this, she gave me two shoke outfits. One is purple and white and the other is uh, uh, beige and white. And then there's mud cloth. Here you have a mud cloth. There's kenti cloth, here you have kenti. And then you have sheer fabrics, which are usually great, better for um, tying uh, hijabs. Okay. So let's go since it's now moving on. So it's my demonstration time. So let's go from very simple and I'm going to do a couple of different ties. Um, I'm not going to use uh, the kimchi because it's not good for head wraps, in my opinion. It's not the best. It's too soft. It's flimsy. Uh, but I wanted to show you what it's like. Now, if it's made, this is a traditional kimchi. You'll find some kimchi that's made just a kimchi print on cotton. You could use that to wrap your head. But this is real kimchi cloth, so it's too flimsy and heavy and it wouldn't be right for head wrap. Same with the mud cloth. I have wrapped my head with this mud cloth, but because it's only really printed on one side, uh, it doesn't look as uh, hippity dippity, uh, but you can use the mud cloth to wrap. Um, but I'm not gonna use that today, it's not the best. I'm gonna start with some real simple wraps. So this is a, small piece that actually came with this outfit. And so I'm going to show you. And I can turn around. And just tie it. That's the simplest way. Y'all already know how to wrap simple wraps. That's it. Okay. Now, if you want to do something a little more extensive, you can just pull it around and tie it on the side. And then, um, Give yourself some peaks and puffs, you know, 
and and just you're just sticking the fabric in the little tie that you've made. And you have a pink, pink and pop. Yes. It would be easier to see you if you stop sharing so that your image could be bigger. Oh. Okay, yes. Let me turn that on. And we do have a question from Johanna. She said, yes. is there a more common measurement of the fabric to use? Oh, good question. Um, with these little ties, it's whatever comes with the outfit. Um, I've noticed that they're getting smaller. Uh, this one is about maybe three feet. Uh, but it's not very uh, wide. I like the big heavy, we'll get to that. This one is a very small, and let me change my view too so I can see what I'm looking like as I talk. Full screen. Uh, anyway, I see Andrea, but I don't see myself. So this one is uh, also about two feet wide and a little bit wider. It comes with an outfit. So, you know, this these that are very small, I usually just tie in the back. That's very simple. So let me move forward to the little bit more fun ones. I have all these simple ones. This one is simple. It comes with this. This is not African. Uh, you'll see some fabric that is trying to be African, but it ain't African. Uh, uh, but I like this because it was made in India and it's a tie dye. And, and you can see it's so symmetrical. That's the first giveaway that it wasn't African. Uh, but you can see that the, the uh, lotus flower design, you, sometimes you can tell by the designs. And this is, you could just tie back as well. It's real simple, that's it. But I like it and it's simple. I usually try to buy African made fabric to support the African sisters and brothers that make stuff. But uh, occasionally I will buy stuff from um, Indonesia or China, you know, they, uh, or India. Uh, these two that are great for hijabs. Hijabs, you'll use a very flimsy, soft, lightweight fabric, right? This is made in China. And I'll wrap the hijab. Now, I, I did not do not know how to officially wrap a hijab, but I did the wear a hijab for a day event that we had some years ago, and they wrapped the hijab on, on me. So I'm going to try to replicate that. So first I put it over like this. Then I pull it around. Oops, let's see if I can do this. And if you haven't uh, had the opportunity to wear a hijab and um, if you do it and just wear it all day or just wear it to the store or something, uh, see how people treat you. It's, it's very interesting because um, I really have a lot of admiration and respect for Muslim sisters that wear hijab because people treat you like you're from out of space or worse. So his job is very, very simple to, to wrap. And then let's just put everything I've done on this side. Here's another one that's good for his job. This was also made in China. And then this one. Oh, already. So let me get to more complex stuff. So this we can do a little bit more with. 
So I'm going to show you how to wrap one from the head at the top. So you would start at the back, of course, wrap it around, and then come to the top, right? And y'all can wrap with me if you have your fabric there. And then um, let's see. If you pull the fabric through, the hole, oops, I got some of my hair. And then, We can put this through here. Judy, Judy lost me. <laughs> okay. Um, I put the fabric through the front, right? To the back. And then I'm going to try to put this through here. <laughs> and if you want, you can put the rest of the fabric in that little puff. So are you tying an, that after you tie it the first time, are you tying a knot and then you're pulling the fabric through? Yes. Uh, I don't think I got it. <laughs> well, you know, play, play with it a little bit because a lot of it is just what looks like. Now this is more in the front than on the top. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it well. Sometimes it's easier to see from the side. I want to borrow that scarf. <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> the other thing you can notice about African fashion is they mix colors that you wouldn't ordinarily see together, like purple and orange. Right? How does that happen? Right? But it does that look like it's fun? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, that looks great. So that's one. And then uh, does anybody else have a fabric you want to tie? Let me do this one. Let me do one in the back real quickly because we just have a few more minutes. Okay, this fabric is also from India, but I like it because it's kind of a, a more of a sheer fabric and it's got a little probably rayon or something. It's stretchy a little bit. So if you want to tie it with a knot in the back, again, you can start at the front. Let me get a little bit more. And then um, I don't tie a knot in it. I just pull the fabric together and twist. And just twist, twist, and then twist it around in a knot. Twist it around in a knot. And then tie it under, or push it under. And that's the back. Not. Can you see that? It's hard to tell <laughs> what you can see. But I like this one because it's easy, simple. And if you have longer hair and you want a bigger knot, you can use the little, you know, these little puffs, put your hair back in the little puff and then wrap the fabric around this and it's a, a larger knot in the back. Is that fun? Okay. And then this is indigo. I wanted to show you indigo, which is a deep, dark blue. So there's some fun fabrics with this. This one is actually in a circle. 
So it's different ways you can tie that, but let me get to the more extensive. So this is a large piece of fabric, African print. This is probably about four or five feet. So I'm going to use this to tie a, a more complex African wrap that y'all can do. So first you want to fold it in half, about in half. And I like to start with the, this way, okay? Now, move it all the way over to, I like on my left, I like more fabric hanging on my left because it's got to go all the way around, right? So I'll put the head wrap on the top of my head. See if I can get this right. And then you have two pieces in the back, right? Just cross them over. You're not tying anything, you're just crossing it over. Can you see that? Say no if you can't. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So then you have a, a long side on one side and a short side on the other. And you just, uh, you can twist it a little bit if you want a little bit of kind of rope feel. And then you flip it over like this. So you still have two pieces, right? You could twist it a little bit if you want. And then bring this over and then just press it down into the top piece. Just press it down. <laughs> this is not enough time, y'all. So, so I have my peaks. And then if you want to puff, you can, you can either make this a little puff like this and tie it under, just stick it, stick the little part that's sticking out underneath. And that's the head wrap. Go ahead, Rocio, Johanna, love it. Donna, you and I are, are right in sync with the purple. Go ahead, Johanna. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Questions, comments, last regrets. <laughs> yes, Chanel. Did you have a question? Listen, I'm going to need you to make like a YouTube channel or <laughs> offering private lessons. Like <laughs> well, actually, actually, I have, um, I'll send you the, maybe not the PowerPoint, but I'll send you a document of this because I put on there how to tie an, an, an African head wrap for quick and easy head wrap styles. Oh girl. I also wanted to have you the Aunt Jemima uh, racist history. Mm -hmm. And then this book on head wraps, a global journey. And then there's a Afro blog on Afri African head wraps um, that might be interesting to you. Cause I know this is such a short time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, is, this is not enough time to do all the stuff we want to do. But I want you to, um, in the chat, since we have just a couple more minutes, in the chat, I'm going to see if, if you all can answer the questions from the, uh, the objectives. So everybody chat in. Identify one purpose that... Uh, uh, for the use of African head wraps. Type in one name for an African head wrap. And then um, the third one, y'all have to answer for yourselves. So questions, comments, last regrets. I have a 
have a question, Judy. Yes. So when you, uh, so your hair, is it in a low um, bun or is it tied low when you do the hair wrap? Or is it a certain way you're supposed to wear your hair? I just put my hair in a hair tie and pull it back because my hair is kind of long. So I just okay. put it back, pulled it back to, so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. That's the best thing to do. Um, if you have short hair, it's perfect because you don't have to worry about just tie it over your hair. But if it's long, it's better just to brush it back because it does, as I was tying that front knot, it was getting caught in the, in the knot. Sometimes that happens. I think you, you're going to have to put it back, use a hair tie to, to put it in a ponytail up high. It is, but it, oh. Or, or, or a bun or something that it's not in the way. Well, you know, here's the, um, this is the, the shoki. I'm going to wrap this. This you will probably never have to uh, wear or at all because it's it's specific to the African tradition. But um, for this one, I'm gonna start this way in the back and then go forward. Oh, and wrap. So good. Put it around. <laughs> this one I might even have to, might not be able to do it in a short time because it does take some time <laughs> to do this one. And, and sometimes Africans will put other fabric underneath the fabric to keep it puffed up. So, and uh, uh, my friend says that it's not uncommon in Africa. They put newspaper because newspaper, unlike fabric, fabric will lose its puff, but newspaper will keep it fuff, puffed up longer. And uh, so, you know, you can wear it at a longer time. And she said, if, if you wrap the head wrap perfectly, you should be able to take it off, put it down and put it back on. <laughs> I've only been able to do that like uh, twice in my life. So that's that one. And then this one is. Um... We have some questions, Judy. Yeah, keep asking your questions while I'm wrapping. Eva asked, do you pin it to keep it secure? No, I don't. Uh, although for the that heavy one that Ashoke, you might have to do that one if you're going to wear it for a long time or if it's not. And then Rocio asks, um, is it okay to wear the head wrap being that I am Mexican American? Um, I think so. Um, you know, I think uh, um, a head wrap where you're you're not like this might not be the best style because it kind of goes with the African style. But if you want to just to do um, a wrap in the back or something like that, that's worn by so many different types of cult in so many different cultures. So you could do a, a, a simple wrap and you just tie it in a, in a, and this is probably the easiest for you, Rocio. I used to wear it when, when I was married to my husband from, from Mexico. <laughs> um, we used to go to family functions. My, my ex-husband was from Zacatecas. And uh, so I used to typically uh, wear either a natural or, you know, uh, Afro or just wrap my hair in a bun in the back. Like this. Uh, and there's no need for pins or anything. It's just, if you could, uh, there you go, Rocio, go ahead for yourself. See, it's very simple. And you could use uh, uh, Mexican fabric. You know, you don't have to use African fabric. It's a head wrap, so you can do anything. 
And you know, if you even want to leave some of it out, that would look cute too, right? Go ahead, Raquel. See how she has part of that just hanging down? That's fun too. So we're at our time. I wanted to respect people's time. But um, were there any other questions, comments, last regrets? Go ahead, Johanna. There you go. And see, isn't that fun when you have something that it just, it's just a fun way to be, right? Y'all look beautiful. 